Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston uh, Station, we are ready for the event. MBRSC, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. MBRSC, how do you hear me? MBRC station, I got you loud and clear. Welcome, Saud. Sultan, we are here today in our dear partnered country in the Republic of Mauritius with the attendance of the acting president, Mr. Idi Bouassouizon. And uh, we are here with over 300 students as well. And we have uh, some students joining us from Rodriguez Island and some people connected with us from Agaliga. So we are here very, and we are here and we are very excited. Thank you, Saud. I'm really excited as well. Uh, it's a great opportunity to talk to you people uh, in Mauritius. Uh, it's a great country and um, Hopefully, I'll get to visit uh, the country when I come back. And uh, I'm really happy to talk to you today and answer all the questions that we have. And let's start with this. Your flag made it to space. And hopefully, when I come back, I'll give it to you in person. Thank you so much. Hello, Dr. Sultan. I'm Eddie Boissezon, acting president of the Republic of Mauritius. It is an honor to speak to you live from Mauritius. This is a major step forward in our collaboration between Mauritius and MBRSC, further to develop our Mauritian Space Initiative. I'm curious to know more about your recent spacewalk experience. Thank you, Thank you so much, sir. And I think, um, as you mentioned, it's a great opportunity for uh, collaboration. Uh, space is a, a, a great frontier for explorations and uh, uh, spread your enthusiasm to uh, explore and learn uh, a lot our, uh, about our planet. And um, to, to, ask, or to answer your question, actually, the EVA was really, really interesting feeling for me. Um, it's the first time that happening uh, in the Arab world. So I felt like a great responsibility. So we spent seven hours outside of the station uh, to do a lot of uh, maintenance and preparation for installing uh, new so solar arrays uh, for, for power uh, uh, capabilities. So it was a re really great uh, honor to be presenting the country and the, the region and that EVA. And now we'll transition to get our one question from Rodriguez Island, and then we'll come back to Port Louis to continue the questions from the students here. Hello, my name is Enovan from Rodriguez. Could you enlighten us about how you get oxygen? Thank you. Very good question. So as you know, the International Space Station is a great um, laboratory that orbiting the Earth. And we don't have um, a regular supply for oxygen from Earth. So we have to produce it here on board the station. So what we do is to um, um, use water and divide the, the uh, content of water, which is hydrogen and oxygen, and produce the oxygen that is necessary for our breathing on board the station. Hello, sir. I'm Ramesh. I would like to know how you get I would like to know if your senses are affected when you return to Earth. Thank you. Very good question. Of course. So on board the International Space Station, we don't have any sensation for directions because our vestibular system is disconnected, literally. So to you, you might see me inverted. But honestly, what I feel now that I'm looking uh, just like uh, a normal orientation for me. So it depends what you tell your brain and what you uh, uh, 
decide with your eyes what are the directions. So uh, when we come back, we need to uh, adapt again to uh, gravity because our vestibular system start to work again. So it takes up to two weeks to be back to normal 100%. Hi, I'm Priyanka. I would like to know what kind of food and drinks do you consume? Thank you. Thank you for the question. So we have a large variety of food. Most of our food is um, um, uh, dehydrated. So we have a, a packet like this and we fill it with water and we eat. We have other uh, types of food as well, which um, uh, comes in pouches and they're ready to eat. We just warm it in the food warmer and uh, we consume it normally. Um, our drinks come uh, in uh, these small bags. We fill it with water and we just drink it as, as we wish. So we have a variety of food on board the International Space Station. Hello, I'm Tikshita. I would like to know how do you sleep? Thank you. Sleeping on board the International Space Station is really interesting. So um, I'm sleeping in this orientation. I have a sleep bag and I go inside this, that sleep bag and I just uh, zip uh, the sleep bag and just close my eyes. I don't have any sensation of, uh, of a need of a pillow or uh, a blanket or anything. So uh, that is my orientation. Other crew members sleep on the ceiling. So their orientation could be uh, something like this. So they sleep like this, and to them, uh, it depends what they tell their minds, how uh, the orientation they're in. So again, uh, we don't have any sensation for orientation here on, on board the International Space Station, and we sleep normally. Hello, sir. I'm Kaveri. I would like to know what is your daily routine on the ISS? Thank you. Thank you for the question. So we have almost 12 hours daily of, uh, of work, exercise, and doing science. So we wake up at uh, uh, 6.30, we do the hygiene, and then we have our breakfast. And then at 7.30, we start with a morning uh, brief for the uh, daily activity. And then we continue work up to uh, 7.30 in the evening, where we finish with another uh, debrief of the activities of the day. And this goes for uh, five days, five working days. And in the end uh, of the weekend, obviously, we have a, a time to rest as a crew. Hi, sir. I'm Demishta. I would like to know how is the ISS protected from space debris? Thank you. Very good question. So um, the ISS orbiting Earth at an altitude of 400 kilometers. And um, during this uh, motion, uh, it is susceptible to some sort of debris uh, or um, uh, floating items. So uh, luckily, we uh, can uh, monitor the larger items or uh, larger objects, and we can maneuver uh, and avoid these uh, small, uh, big uh, uh, piece of junk or, uh, or debris. But unfortunately, some uh, micro uh, meteorite uh, can uh, hit the station. And um, that is difficult to avoid, but uh, still we are protected with a, a very hard body of the station. Yet, in case of an emergency, we are uh, uh, ready to uh, uh, react to any uh, emergency regarding a depress of the uh, environment inside the station. Hi, I'm Mihal. I would like to know how do you keep the notion of time in space? Thank you. Excellent question. So do you know that we have 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets every day? It was really hard uh, for me to comprehend uh, this environment. So when we arrived, I, I kept uh, seeing uh, sunrise and sunset every 45 minutes. So it was really difficult for me. But what we use is actually uh, GMT time. And that is our reference for daily activities. Uh, when we wake up, uh, we do activities and we go to, to bed. Uh, uh, based on uh, uh, GMT time, Greenwich Mean Time. Hello, I'm Mitisha, and my question for you, sir, is how do you keep yourself upright during a spacewalk? Thank you.
So during uh, the EVA, um, it, it was basically a similar sensation to what we have uh, here inside the station. So any orientation that you tell yourself, you'll be in that orientation. But just like what we have in the station, we have some marking for handrails, for racks, and uh, for uh, indications on the walls. So we have a deck, for example, here. We have forward, because this is uh, the forward direction of the station. We have aft, and we have overhead. Same thing uh, outside of the station. We have handrails that can, uh, can tell us whether we are going port or starboard or zenith or nadir. So it, it is um, sometimes hard to uh, uh, navigate, but with the help of the ground and looking at these uh, mile markers, we can uh, accomplish the job with no problems. Hello, I'm Shannon. My question to you is, what inspired you to become an astronaut? Thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, I think the, uh, the biggest motivator for me is uh, the sense, or uh, loving the sense of exploration. And um, I wanted to be uh, a pilot when I was young. And obviously, when I was um, uh, a little kid, I was watching a lot of uh, space-themed uh, cartoons. So that, that was the, uh, the ignition of that dream. And when I, I grew up, I, I just kept uh, reading, uh, kept indulging myself with all sorts of information about space. So that dream uh, uh, continued with me until I uh, got the opportunity to be selected as an astronaut. Hello, I am Hassan, and I would like to know main challenges that you faced in space. Thank you. So uh, again, we are trained to um, uh, uh, react to any sort of emergency. Uh, on board the International Space Station, um, uh, we are uh, living in a closed environment. You see all the wires here, but we are capable of reacting to um, a fire, for example. And coming back to uh, space debris, if this hits the station, it can cause a, a leak in the um, closed uh, uh, volume of the space station. So we are also uh, trained uh, to react to that emergency as well. So we spend a lot of time uh, training with these emergencies as a crew to have the, uh, the uh, accurate response for any emergency. Hi, I'm Zafira. I would like to know what do you do in case of emergency? Thank you. Thanks so much. As I said, um, uh, we are trained to, uh, uh, we train actually for years to uh, uh, react and respond to any sort of emergency. So the main uh, types of emergencies on board the station is fire, uh, depressurization, and a, a leak of a toxic uh, spill. So all of these uh, can uh, cause a problem for the crew, but we have the right equipments and we have the right response to, to deal with all sorts of emergencies that I mentioned. Hello, I'm Chetna. I would like to know how, how it is, what was the most beautiful scenery from space? Thank you. Thank you so much for the question. So um, probably the, the first sensation when I arrive here, as I mentioned, is the feel of time. Um, without a reference, it is difficult to understand whether it's morning or, or day, because you have 24 hours, which is what we used to on Earth, but we have 16 sunrises and 16 uh, sunsets. So that was the, uh, the mental challenge that I had when, when I got on board the International Space Station. But again, we synced our time to GMT time, and I think it went normally after that. Hello, sir. I'm Kavish. I would like to know how do you keep yourself mentally and physically fit on ISS? Thank you. So uh, let's start with physical uh, preparation. So every day we train for about two and a half hours. Um, it, it is a must. It's not optional. So we, we do that every day. So we need to keep uh, the muscles uh, density and the bone density. Um, uh, in a best, in a good shape uh, before uh, we return, and mentally, actually, we work as as a, as a team on board the station. So we have a sensation of uh, living within a family. Um, the source, uh, the, the the sense of camaraderie is is really something that we rely on to keep in a, in, a, in a good mental health. Plus, we keep uh, connecting with Earth, just like I'm doing with you guys today. 
We talk to uh, our friends and families through emails and normal calls or video calls as well. Hello, sir. I'm Zahir. How will the science experiments on ISS benefit society? Thank you. Thanks so much. So um, here on board the station, we do a lot of science. We do a lot of uh, experiment that can help humanity on Earth. So uh, for the last two months, I've been working on a lot of experiments, and I recall working on heart tissues. So scientists uh, on the ground, they use us as astronauts, and we, we are their eyes, their ears, and, and hands to perform these experiments. So I, was, I, I saw some heart tissues beating in space, and it was incredible. So um, these tissues are uh, uh, receiving medication on board the station. And this can help us uh, develop some medication uh, for uh, heart diseases on, on Earth. Uh, we have some other um, experiments that I worked on is uh, the biofabrication. We actually can print uh, bio tissues that can help us in the future uh, 3D print organs and donate them to uh, people in need. Hi, my name is Gregory. I would like to know how close to reality is a simulated training program for astronauts. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So uh, we have a, a large building in Houston. Uh, it has a mock-up of the International Space Station. So we spend uh, days and, and weeks to, to train ourselves on these uh, mock-ups to uh, uh, perform daily routines and uh, conduct some sort of science. And for the EVA training, for example, we have a large pool. It's called the MBL, the, the Natural uh, Neutral Buoyancy Lab. We go there, we spend seven hours, just exactly what we did uh, last uh, uh, EVA. So we train uh, how to uh, translate and how to perform maintenance in the, uh, um, in the EVA uh, operations. So we have a very realistic uh, mock-ups and training facilities on the ground. Hi, I'm Maiva. And my question is, how does a launch in a rocket feel like? Thank you. The launch was really quick, actually. Uh, believe it or not, we were in, in space in less than nine minutes from launch to uh, uh, final insertion. So it felt uh, really quick, uh, a lot of vibration, uh, and then everything went uh, quiet, and that was the indication of us reaching space. It, it was incredible, actually. Uh, Sultan, the people of Mauritius would like to see the flag one more time and an ending message maybe from your side. Thank you. Thank you again for this opportunity. This is the flag of Mauritius, making it all the way to space. And I was uh, really happy talking to you today and hopefully we'll have more opportunities to talk in the future. Station, this is Houston ACR, and that concludes our event. Thank you to all the participants from UAE and Mauritius Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.